This is the POCO F6 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. We can see an orange rubber gasket around the opening of the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Now there are 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Taking a look at this top plastic cover, we see the dual LED flash, the NFC antenna, another antenna flex cable on the top corner, as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping them off. Looking at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel primary camera, as well as the 8 megapixel ultra wide lens. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The connectors for the cameras can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner underneath the shield, as well as copper tape on the shield top transfer heat. On the other side, we see the 20 megapixel front facing camera, Next to that is the infrared or IR blaster, as well as more copper tape and thermal paste on the back shields to help transfer heat. Once the copper tape has been peeled back, we see more thermal paste on top of the RAM which is seated on top of the processor. And this is the bottom speaker assembly. There's some graphite film over it to help transfer heat. There's also a mesh filter and rubber gasket over the opening. On the back you can see the speaker itself. And on the corner there's an antenna board that the black coaxial cable connects to. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off.
This is the 5000 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed, we see the flex cable for the screen which is routed through an opening in the midframe, as well as this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard. So if you needed to replace the screen, you would have to remove the back plate, the screws on the top plastic cover and the cover itself, disconnect the battery cables and pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, and then disconnect the screen cable from the main board, peel off the adhesive pouch for the battery, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. Taking a look at the subboard, we see red rubber gasket on the charger port and the primary microphone is located underneath this covered shield. The SIM reader is located on the other side. The X-axis linear or vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held on with some adhesive. And the same goes for the fingerprint sensor, which is located over here. To replace those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. So for this phone, if you're worried about accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you won't need to worry about damaging either of the microphones or the filters, since both microphones and filters are seated above the holes, so they won't get damaged. There's also a red rubber gasket and mesh filter over the bottom speaker opening on the frame. Now that the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled off, as well as the flex cables, we have a better look at the fairly large vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located here. If you need to replace that, just gently peel off the flex cable from the frame, and lift up and pull out this black plastic bracket, which will release the flex cable from the frame. As for the buttons themselves, those can be removed by just pulling them out of the frame. The proximity sensor is located over here, and next to that is the earpiece speaker which is held on with some adhesive. Again to replace that just apply some heat and pry it off. There are also two liquid damage indicator stickers on this phone. One is located over here which is that white sticker, and another one over here on the bottom, underneath the sim reader on the frame. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.